All right, good morning, everyone. Um, it's now 9.30, so I guess, uh, I guess everyone's either sleeping in or at the other session, so we'll, we'll go ahead and begin without them. Um, good morning, my name's Sean. Uh, I'm from, I work in, in the day job. My day job is at uh, the Cape Cod Commission. We're a land use planning agency um, in Massachusetts. Um, and this, what I've been doing, uh, basically has been born out of me going to state of the map for the first time last year. Um, and, uh, and my willingness to improve education, uh, you know, in the States. Um, so this is the classroom, um, and, uh, and also, uh, the, uh, the map of, of Cape Cod. Um, today we're going to talk mostly about Barnstable High School. Um, Barnstable is the only city on Cape Cod, um, but I want to say thanks first and foremost to the OpenStreetMap US chapter uh, and also to Barnstable Public Schools for allowing me to, to do this kind of thing. Um, Hillary Miller, uh, who's the AP Human Geography teacher at Barnstable, and Ginny Turner, who's the head of the uh, sixth, grade six through 12 curriculum for social studies. Um, I reached out to them, and I'll talk about it in a few, in a few slides, but reached out to them in 2013, and, and ever since they've, they've kind of just let me um, you know, integrate uh, OpenStreetMap into their curriculum, which has been awesome. I mean, I'm fortunate enough to do that, um, and uh, I think that's one of the challenges is, you know, I mean, and then also Mashpee High School, um, and Mashpee Public Schools, Celeste Reynolds, who's the AP uh, teacher there, um, they're setting up uh, integration for, for this coming school year. Uh, next year, I worked with a student, and I'll talk about that. But, um, but thank you for all, for all them. And, and how many people, show of hands, um, are in education? Uh, how, how many are actually teachers or, or instructors? Cool. And students? Couple of students, awesome. Um, that's great. Uh, so I'm, I'm a GIS analyst by trade. Um, I'm still a newbie. I would consider myself still a newbie to, to OpenStreetMap. Um, but I care about geoeducation, uh, digital education, and tech education. And so I believe that the OpenStreetMap is, is a great uh, opportunity to, to integrate this in, in uh, United States uh, curriculum at the secondary school level. Um, in my community, there's 15 high schools, um, approximately. Uh, it's, it's interesting, really, um, the, the secondary education in my state, at least. Um, you know, there's, there's schools that are coming and going right now and really competing. It's, it's, my, my, my fiance is a teacher um, at one of the high schools, and um, there, there's school choice. We have school choice, and, um, and it's the competition for students is, is really, really, really big right now. Um, so I think, it, I think that's just interesting because when I was back in, in high school a long time ago now, um, I, didn't, I didn't notice it at least. I don't know if it was still going on. But um, anyways, AP Human Geography is the course that I'm integrating uh, OpenStreetMap into. Um, and this course has been around in the States from 2010 to the present day. Um, and uh, I think that it, it definitely ties in directly with the first objective to, to, the, um, to the human geography, which is uh, interpret maps and analyze geospatial data. Um, but the problem is that it's not in, uh, it's not in the, um, there's, there's no oversight uh, in, into enforcing uh, integration of OpenStreetMap into the curriculum. I think that th that's important. I think that we can work with the college board who, who develops this course um, and, and maybe potentially other courses, uh, but we need, to talk, we need to open up conversations if we want to do this um, with educators. Um, and so at Barnstable High School, I work with two sections of the course, and, and in each there's, you know, uh, about 20 students, uh, and it's 50-50 uh, male and female. So I, I think that's awesome. Um, I think that's great, and I think that's what it always should be. Um, so I think it's a great opportunity. Um, 
you know, you gain a great perspective uh, looking, uh, you know, working with kids, and I think that's great too. Um, at Mashby High School, I mentioned that I'm working with a senior student on his senior project. Um, he went through the AP Geography course, uh, took it freshman year. Um, that's him uh, all the way on the far right. Uh, he's very active in uh, performing arts. He's going to be attending Vassar College next year. Um, the great kid, and he just cares about uh, geography education. So hopefully, at some point in his career, he'll be uh, doing something uh, utilizing OpenStreetMap. Um, this is a picture taken this week uh, of kids uh, editing uh, and ID editing, you know, uh, in in class. And so, why might you listen to me? Well, you enjoy giving back. I love I love to give back to my community. I think that's important for people to do. Um, I do it locally just because, you know, I'm busy outside of work, so I have other things going on. It's, it's, it's easier for me to do, um, but I also, you know, donate um, to, to other causes uh, internationally. But I think co your community that you live in, you need to be a good citizen and give back, and it's allowed me to do that in some way. Um, you've, you view your OSM as a platform, and I, I do for modern day D, uh, geo education and digital education. And I think both of those are going to become super important internationally, but especially in the States uh, uh, moving forward. Um, hopefully someday when I have kids that are growing up, they're, they're, they're doing this in school. Um, so uh, maybe you might even be unsure if this is the right platform for, for students to, to work in. I mean, you know, I mean, are they, do you think it's damaging to, to the OpenStreetMap? And I think that's a conversation that we need to have. You know, there's people out there in the community that might see this as, you know, not the right direction, but I see it as you're, you're providing, you know, the future which is what this conference is about, the state of the map. You're providing the future. You know, these students are going to be better mappers by the time they're my age than I am right now. Um, and, it, and it's important to you. It's important to me. Um, and then the, the, the lastly, you know, why it's important to my day job, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're a land use planning agency. We work for the 15 towns. Uh, in the Barnstable County, which is the county of uh, Cape Cod. And, you know, it's burdensome, um, you know, getting these data sets and, and organizing everything and, and staying up on the data management and then building applications. And, I mean, I, I, my job title isn't what I do. I mean, I do so many different things in my work. Um, so I, I think that it's an opportunity to, to lower the burden uh, for, for, for workers like myself. Um, and then some take homes. This picture, uh, there was a five year old in our class this week uh, who has already, is crazy uh, to me, but who has already um, memorized the, the capitals of the states in the in, in, uh, United States. And he's on his way to memorizing the capitals of every country in the world. So it's crazy. I mean, he was, he was uh, flipping, you know, we, we, we set him up and just let him, uh, let him explore the, the open street map. Um, that's his mother and, and one of the other students uh, in the class. And what, what they're looking at is a gridded uh, map of Barnstable uh, that, that we made, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, the format for teaching uh, OSM at the the secondary uh, education level, um, what, what has been challenging to me uh, in this process? And then, um, and then what could possibly help, you know, suggestions that I have for you all if you're all interested in doing this. Um, and, and so that's what we're going to kind of go through today. Uh, what has happened? Well, in March of 2013, um, I took the position in 2013. Uh, and I really wanted to give back to the community in some way. Um, I moved to Cape Cod uh, from Connecticut. Uh, and I wanted to do it. Uh, at the time, I, I was looking at um, Esri's GeoMentor program. Uh, but I went to the first, uh, my first State of the Map conference last year, came back from that, and I, and I saw the platform that, that I thought was easiest. I mean, it's easy to integrate. They don't, there's no download of, of software. I mean, everything's in the browser. 
as far as editing in, in the classroom. It's very easy, uh, it's manageable, and, um, and it's, you, know, you, you get a product out of it and the, and the students see what they're doing. I think that's important. Um, there is a timeline you know, in my presentation, I'll share this on my Twitter account after, um, that y'all can, can take a look at. Uh, and then the format of, uh, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk a little bit about the format of what we're doing. Um, and that's another picture about, uh, from the other day. You know, so we start out with an intro. So every year, and, and this has been going on for the past two years, so it's still in development. But uh, we start out with an intro, and I like these two intros. Um, but I will say that, you know, you, you can't learn how to edit without starting to edit. So, you know, as, as soon as, you know, you can, you can give a presentation and you can assign the students to to go to learnosm.org, and they might do it, uh, they might pay attention to you, but they're not gonna fully understand it until they actually get into it. Uh, so we try to get into it pretty quickly. Um, we use field papers prior to, to editing, and so that's like the second class. Um, so the first meeting, we, we do like an introduction, and then uh, the second class, we use field papers. And we go out into the property, and this is Barnstable High School, and the middle school is behind it. We go out to the property and we, we edit on the, on the papers. Um, we add all kinds of map features to it that, that aren't on, on, the, uh, on the map already. And it's, inter it's interesting to see the students, you know, not without having an aerial uh, uh, coverage, figure out where they are um, on, on the map. It's, it's very interesting. Um, so it kind of gets them into the framework of, of thinking like that. And I think that's important, the first step, because you know, they're coming from ninth grade, so they're, or I'm sorry, eighth grade, so they're freshmen, and in Massachusetts, you're a freshman at ninth grade. And they are, you know, they're, they, they're products of, you know, learning mostly a lot, a lot of the time from textbooks. And now this is taking them outside of their comfort zone, and you have to be respective to that, and you have to kind of develop a new way of thinking an independent way of thinking. Um, and and it's, not, it's not to say that everyone in every education um, you know, uh, uh, program is, is like this, but it's, it's, it's definitely a different way of thinking for them. Um, so what we do is we split up the town into, or I'm sorry, the, the city into grids. Um, we, we split it up uh, you know, just using um, GIS software. And then we assign grids to the students. And so they're assigned one at a time uh, so that they can, we can monitor what they're doing within an area. It's manageable. Uh, they, they, they don't uh, overlap each other in editing. So, you know, you're, you're getting a coverage of the, of the scale of the, the city. Uh, and it works for us. It's worked for us, at least. Um, but we need something that's that's practical. It's it's accessible, so you can you can get something out of it as far as a grade, and then um, and then also it's scalable. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. What I mean by that, I'll talk about it more in a minute. But what I mean by that is the fact that this winter <laughs> uh, we got a lot of snow, and uh, I mean we 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 met in October, and then we haven't we didn't met, meet until this week this past week because of many things, right? I mean, there's all kinds of things that, that you have to balance. We, we meet during the day. So they have to have school and they have to have a long period for, for me to go there and, get some, and they can get something out of me being there. So we use 90, 90 minute blocks. And so if they're playing catch up from being behind, they're in a college paced course we, we, couldn't, we couldn't meet until, until, until this past week. So, I mean, that's, a, that's an issue. It's not integrated into their curriculum, right? So the, so the teacher, I mean, she has, she has to cover a multitude of other things. And, um, and so you can't, you can't fault her or anything like that. It's just the, it's just the process. That's what it is. Um, we utilize Google Docs to, to keep track of, uh, of the students' edits. Uh, they're a Google school, so it's easy. <coughs> excuse me. It's easy to to track their their stuff. You know, I, I have access to to this to this um, folder. So there's one folder that has 
uh, two folders for each section, and in those there's a map journals for each. Um, and if you go left to right across this, um, there's there's an example of a map journal. Then there's guidelines on uh, on editing uh, that we give them. Um, you know, just kind of quick hitters, one pager, and then resources. Um, another another journal example, and then section one and two, uh, their their grid numbers. Uh, so basically, the, the thought process is that once they finish their grid, they tell us they're finished, we assign them a new one, we look at what they've done at that grid, and then we talk to them about what, you know, you know, what they've done that, that, that we like, you know, and what they could improve upon for, for the next time, what they could go back and, and fix. Um, this is the OSM journal that I talked about. Uh, this is one of the students that did this the other day. Um, and, uh, but, but this is kind of like what we're trying to get out of them, you know. Um, the, um, the diary uh, uh, that OSM provides is great just for, just for sharing like what you're doing and keeping track of what you're doing personally and, in, in, um, in, you know, the edits that you're making on OpenStreetMap. But for us, we want to see a picture of, of what they've done. So they just take a screenshot of their edits every time they finish their editing session. Um, you know that you can get to through your profile, and um, and then you know we we instill in them the value to using a workflow and keeping track of where you are because you know we we met on Thursday and Friday this week we won't meet until this coming Thursday or Friday and you know they've played you know a lacrosse tournament and all these other things that they've got going on in life just like myself that I pick up and put down projects left and right. And I need to keep track, and it's and it's a great process to get into at a younger age, because you're going to be better worker by the time you're my age if you're doing it then. So that's kind of what what works for us. As far as uh, questions on map features, we usually point them. You know, we ask them to go go to the uh, the map features uh, wiki, and and actually dive in and and do a control F and search for for uh, you know tags. Like, you know, if, if they're looking for a restaurant, you know, let's, let's search for a restaurant and see what, see, what, see what kind of features are out there. I mean, we don't want to just give them, you know, this is the way you should do it. They need to explore. They need to document their work. And they need to, they need to learn. And so this is learning, you know. And it's tough. It's, you know, they might get like five edits in a 90-minute segment. But as far as the quality of their edits and, and the quality of the process, learning the process at a younger age, I think that the, that the map's going to benefit from this kind of exercise in the long run. And it's, it's going to be better, you know, uh, uh, having this at a younger age instilled in, 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 uh, in the future for, of, uh, of the OpenStreetMap. And so then, the, then it ties in, like I said at the beginning, it ties in directly into the curriculum. Um, we kind of broke out, you know, this, is, this, this talks about uh, the different sections that they have in class. Um, the first one, really, we do the field exercise with, with field papers. Um, and then we edit in map, in, in uh, I'm sorry, we edit in the classroom within their grids. And then outside of the classroom, we edit like a theme, the, th the theme of the class at that time. So they can edit anywhere really on the Cape Cod because there's a lot of editing to do on the, on the Cape. Um, but they can do anything in Barnstable that's related to, you know, health or, or whatever, cultural patterns and, and processes, so like restaurants and cultural centers and so on and so forth. Um, so the, any map features that's tied into that theme, you know, that, that's what we're trying to do uh, locally. Uh, so challenges, um, and it's, uh, that's just a picture of, of uh, Major League Baseball challenges because I think it's crazy. You make a long game even longer by doing that. Um, and I will say, this is my dog, Bo. Um, <laughs> Bo had a rough winter because uh, usually he can, he can run around. We have a, we have a pretty big yard, and uh, he just ran around in circles the whole time. So this is one of the times that he went nuts. And kind of how I felt all winter, and doing this too, but um, but you need you need to be flexible. So like you know you ne you never know what's going to happen doing this kind of thing because it's not part of their curriculum and they're not mandated to do this. 
you know, they're, this, this teacher that I work with, she's awesome, Hillary uh, Miller. She's, she's great, and she, let, she allows me to come in and use up her 90-minute blocks when she needs to teach, you know, A through X, um, Y, Z to the students. She's letting me come in. But you need motivated teachers. It's not part of the curriculum and initiatives. Um, and I think that uh, learning to teach has been, has been fun. But uh, it's, it's, also been a, it's also been a little bit of a challenge. Um, and then suggestions that I have, you know, it, we, we met with the whole uh, department. I'm sorry, I met with the whole department. After I introduced the idea to the, the department head for the town of Barnstable, for Barnstable Public Schools, met with the whole department, and for many reasons, right? Uh, you know, what they had on their plate at the time, maybe feeling, I don't know, they might have been feeling uh, you know, overwhelmed already. It was the end of the year in 2013. Um, when we met with them, only one teacher out of, I think it was 10 to 15 teachers, expo expressed any interest. And most of them throughout, throughout I mean, it, and it's not like, you know, I have nothing against that because, you know, they, they have so many different competing, um, you know, time commitments to, to, to deal with. And they're thinking of, oh, shoot, we're going we're gonna to take on another thing, and it's not even mandated, so why should I do it? Um, but there was one teacher that, that let me do it. And so I, I think your challenge, if you want to do this or, or try to do this, is to find that, you know, that person that's passionate about, uh, about integrating this. Um, and I think everything else, you know, you can read. Um, am I doing it right? And I mean, I, I don't even know. Like, you know, there's, there's Teach OSM that's going on, and I think that's awesome, uh, Steven Johnson and, and, and everyone else that's, that's involved with that. Um, we're going to have a case study up there, I think, soon. Um, and I'll be at the, the, uh, the um, event tomorrow. Uh, and I think, you know, if, you, if you're wanting to get into this, you know, join the, join the Teach OSM listserv. Uh, I, I, I emailed out to it a few days, or I'm sorry, a, a few weeks ago, maybe even months now. Um, you know, my whole, like, spiel on, on what I'm giving to you really now. Uh, and I shared with, the, with everyone on the listserv my, um, my uh, Google Documents. And I'll share them with you guys, and, and, uh, and I'm open to anything that you guys suggest, or you know, you want to take it and start it in your own community, that's great. Um, you know, see if it works for you. But uh, I think that we need to work on this in, in, in an OSM education and onboarding. I mean, if you were at the hot uh, uh, birds of a feather yesterday, onboarding is, is needed for, for, for new mappers. Um, and I think it's our obligation to do that. Um, and then in the future, kind of advanced editing stuff that I'd like to get to, but I want to get the foundation down first. Um, and I think my time's basically up, so I want to thank everyone for, for showing up nice and early. Um, that's a beautiful picture of Cape Cod. Uh, if you've never been, go there at some point. It's a cool place. Um, so now with that, any questions? Go ahead. Uh, ninth. Yeah, so it's freshman, freshman year. And freshman level is, is when you'd take AP geog human geography in the States. And you're feeling you've got a pretty good age, more or less? I think, I think even, you know, I, I, I have cousins that are, you know, in middle school that, that, that have done it, you know. I mean, I, I think it's scalable for sure. Um, you know, as long as, as long as you're, you know, have some kind of, curriculum in place, uh, this, you know, kind of like the whole winter got me to a spot that I could, like, or get my thoughts organized and stuff like that. But, yeah, I think, I think yeah, ninth grade's great. I mean, any, anywhere in, in high school I think is great. There's kids that, I, you know, I started last year actually working with the students, and there's students that are, that are still, you know, heavily involved in, in, in mapping right now. Um, and then there's issues. There's some that, that just sign up and make a couple edits. And that's, that's a little bit of an issue, too, is, is they're, they're not sustained. I mean, I want them to be sustained, but I also want them to know that it's there and it's a resource and it's helping the world, you know, so. But I think it's a good age. Yep. Uh, AP um, course. 
perspectives on the uh, uh, related to actual mapping, like uh, a task that you gave students. So it looked like you had like gave students mapping tasks for the local community and connected those to some of the AP course uh, uh, college board course objectives. Is that is, is that what I saw? Like that one right there. Back, uh, actually, a little forward. Uh, you passed it. Right here? No, no, it was it was forward. It was towards the uh, end a little bit. That one right oh, there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Sorry. Yeah, so that, that ties the map features that we're trying to map um, into the curriculum that they're using. Curriculum, uh, like... Uh, sections. Sections, yeah. okay. And, and that's national. I mean, anyone, anywhere that, that has the, the program can, can pick that up and kind of run with it. Um, yep. Um, thanks for a nice talk. I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about how the kids foster some sort of independence through this tool. So it's not instructional in the same way as right. other classroom experiences are, mm -hmm. and they edit and learn from each other, I imagine. Um, and I was wondering, what is your experience doing that with ninth graders? How much do they take control of this themselves? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I mean, I, th I think that they like the freedom of, of being able to be kind of in control. It's like independent... Uh, independent thinking and I, and I think in the states at least you know you get in a way from actually just just learning from a book or you know slides or whatever and I think that's important that, that, that they that they start to learn that at a younger age and some kids pick it up and they're fine just like you know I am with with picking up a new you know d development um, tool or whatever it it's it really depends but I, I mean it's a, it, I, think, I see the value in them just going through the process, and even if they struggle with it or they're fine with it, I mean, you, it, people learn differently, and you need to be open to that. And I think that can be said about myself and, and my coworkers. I mean, we, we're different people, so you need to kind of curtail your, your, your teaching to that. But, but I think they, they, like, they love it. I mean, they, 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 talk about, they talk about it like they do, so... I, I can only assume so, and I and I got a thank you note from one of them. So it's it's been fun. It's been fun to see a different perspective on things, and they're the ones that are actually active, very active in our community, you know. So they know what's out there, and and they have the ground level kind of knowledge. So I think that's important too. I think we got time for maybe one more, two more. Maybe you can share some ideas about geo processing. Geoprocessing, I'm sorry. QA. QA for students' edits. What do you think about that? About QA. Oh, QA on students' edits. Yeah, I think that's an issue. Can you I mean, a question, Sean? So, yeah, sure. Um, what do I think about uh, QA and, and, and how to go at that on student, student edits, right? Um, and I think that's an issue that I haven't resolved. So I would love to hear, you know, suggestions on, on how to do that. But I think that that's an issue for just new mappers, you know, not just students. And that's why I think that this is kind of scalable, you know. And, um, and it's important, I think, for us, you know, to, to, to help people um, in, in different ways, you know. But I, th I think we need to address that. I do. And I haven't, I haven't been able to yet. I think one more and then we've got to get to the next presentation. Up in the top. A QA, uh, I was wondering, would it be feasible, you'd shown the grid that you created where you assigned each student a different square. Could the squares be peer reviewed so that a student has an assignment to do quality assurance on another random square? They won't know whose student square it is. Is that yeah. feasible? Uh, I don't know if it's feasible. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not, I, I don't know the technical end of that. Um, I would love to find out. The problem is a little bit is my time, you know, you know, the commitment too to this. Um, but yeah, I would love, I would love to do it in some way, and I'm and I'm open to any ideas. So, um, any more questions? I think I'll be around for the rest of the week, uh, weekend. Um, thank you for coming. I'll see you.